Yeah, the topic for today is metallic pigments and dispersions for the printing industry. And in the next hour, we will give you an overview on the features of these effect pigment class for the different graphic arts applications. You know, so hopefully with some useful information on how to use the specific characteristics of metallics in the best way. I am Isabel Gassner, working for Eckhart for yeah, roughly 20 years now as a chemical engineer in the technical service department. And I'm responsible for customers and projects in Germany, Austria and Switzerland. Yeah, I'm supporting the technical requests for all printing technologies, Gravure, Flexo, Offset Screen, and also digital printing. And I'm together here with my colleague Thorsten. Yeah, hello from my side again. My name is Thorsten Schmelich. I'm working for Eckart since about 15 years in the technical service department for graphic arts. And uh, my focus was always Asia. So in the last years, I um, had mainly the countries Japan, India, and uh, Greater China, um, giving the technical service to these customers in, in this area. After a short introduction to our company, we will continue with some introduction to the basics of effect pigments and inks, followed by a brief overview on our product range for the printing industry. We will explain how to choose the metallic effect pigments for analog printing technologies and how to disperse and handle the products to formulate inks with optimized effects. If you have questions, please use the chat function and we will look forward for your questions. And yeah, we will reply individually after the presentation. And so, yeah, I would say we can start. Yeah. Yeah, Eckhart, as uh, one of the leading manufacturers of metallic pigments worldwide, has its headquarters in Hartenstein in Bavaria, more pre precisely in the heart of Franconia, very much in the nature, surrounded by forests and villages, as you can see here in the picture. Um, the city of Nuremberg is about 50 kilometers from here. We manufacture effect pigments for a broad field of industries. For example, automotive and industrial coatings, the plastics industry, as well as the cosmetic and personal care market. We produce aluminum grades for the construction industry and for the production of lightweight concrete. And we have um, a separate plant for zinc flakes as well for functional applications like the anti-corrosion protection. In Germany, Eckhart has two manufacturing sites, one located in Günderstahl, this one, as you can see on the picture here, a second one in the place of uh, Wackersdorf, pretty much nearby. Roughly 1,100 uh, 1, people working here in Germany. Our global headcount is approximately 1,700 people for the Eckhart organization. Yeah, this is our global footprint. Eckhart's competence in metallic pigments, ink and printing. We have been producing metallic pigments since Eckhart was founded in 1876. Beyond the milling technology, we have developed processes for customized supply forms, chemical modification, various stabilization methods for corresponding application in the various market segments. We've also started developing metallic printing inks since approximately 30 years. The main driver was uh, that the market demand for stable one-pack inks was um, growing and uh, the market at that time had uh, still a lot of two-pack inks with uh, limited stability and Eckhart developed stable uh, formulations which were stable enough to meet the new requirements. Our product developments for ready-to-use inks also include nowadays um, gravure, flexo, tower coder inks, as well as screen printing inks. Beside the, um, the fact we also have um, digital printing inks for um, the inkjet market. With specialists in the different chemistries like water-based, UV, LED curable inks, solvent and oil-based, 
and two in-house presses, we have the possibility to test new products under real market conditions. As you can see here, the presses we have in, in our application service center, uh, we are making use of our Roto Flexo and Gravure press. We can run press trials with solvent-based UV and water-based inks for speeds to up to 150 meters per minute. And of course, we can use uh, all kinds of available substrates on the market, like films and paper and board substrates. This gives us a pretty much good view on products, uh, especially ink products, which have been developed um, towards their application performance for the real um, press situation. Yeah, what are the advantages of metallic inks for print jobs? Uh, metallic inks are in competition with other technologies, for example, hot foil, cold foil, or metallized substrates. And metallic effects from Eckhart offer a wild field of possibilities in printing. The ink is printed on the spot, just where the design desires the special effect. And this is no additional waste is created, and inks can be used with current machine setups. Thorsten mentioned it already, Eckhart produces metallic pigments since 1876, and we offer a complete range from light to dark, from bright to mirror-like effects. Polychromatic effects are achieved by printing CMYK on top or by using the process colors for direct tinting. Tests with an de-inking institute show that metallic inks have a high capability to be de-inkable and therefore take part of the standard recycling process to reuse the valuable substrate. From a design part of view, the use of metallic inks offers many opportunities, uh, as shown here in the pictures, full tone, or printing with an effect gradient, and a vignette, or even with clear look labels, where metallics are printed reverse and show a foil-like effect. And ink is printed in line, and this is saving cost and production time as the existing yeah, machine setup can be used. Hmm. In what market fields are we active? So we we offer solutions, we Eckhart, <laughs> for all typical market segments, pigment paste or in ink form within a selection of effects. Yeah, we come later to that. We serve the markets here for folding cartons, flexible packaging, corrugated, wet glue, I mentioned already self-adhesive labels and even more wallpaper, tissue, gift wrap, industrial screen printing and publications. <laughs> yeah, here you can see the served market segments in the printing industry and uh, the chemistry. Um, we are delivering uh, solutions to mainly all kinds of relevant chemistries and printing technologies under the standards set by the markets. The applications, we, which were mentioned already, are offering a large variety um, of challenges from developing finished inks. Therefore, also our pigment development is uh, very much involved in that. Um, as we see, pigments um, must somehow fit into the end use applications and here a lot of different requ requirements um, are set by the end users. Coming to a very important point, the compliance. There are of course local regulations which are limiting the use of uh, raw materials in many cases and therefore part of our development is also to uh, really look forward to um, new possible raw materials that are meeting all the requirements um, for, sec for the markets um, where we want to sell this product. In uh, many cases, a global formulation does not exist because uh, in many countries, then uh, there are limited limitations, uh, there are country listings. Um, and of course, also um, OPR is regulating. Um, so a lot of um, limitations towards the um, regulatory standpoint <clears throat> and we need 
uh, to produce on uh, um, compliant products for the global market. Beside um, these local regulations, yeah, we are focusing on food packaging grade. FPG our, is our shortcut for this special ma uh, market segment. This is to make sure that the products are tested and uh, suitable for indirect food contact with uh, lowest migration uh, possible. And uh, products are manufactured under GMP. This is to make sure that uh, customers have enough confidence in using also metallic inks for the market, for the growing uh, field of uh, food packaging industry and targeting a very high consumer confidence in the end. For tobacco, well, there are also regulations available um, which we are trying to meet in all cases. Um, and of course, not beside national regulations, for example, in Germany, there are also brand owners um, requirements uh, which our products fulfill for tobacco. No, no, it takes, okay. Our product range uh, include, in general, aluminum pigments, gold bronze, pearlescent pigments, glass pearl effect pigments, as well as PVD aluminum flakes. And uh, as a forward integrated company, we also offer metallic inks as um, finished products ready to use um, as part of the development of all the flake products. Um, just a word about aluminum pigments first. Um, here we have different kinds of um, milling technologies which we apply as a dry milling process leading to pigment powders, Mi wet milling process which is the dominating uh, manufacturing process where the pigments also are um, going into other industries, not only graphic arts, yeah, and um, beside that, we have also this PVD aluminum flake pigments, which are uh, manufactured by a completely different process, uh, the so-called physical vapor deposition, where extremely thin layers of aluminum are um, deposited on a surface by a vacuum metallization. And this leads to extremely high glass pigments delivering effects that can compare to pure metallization by a printed methods. Gold bronze pigments are manufactured uh, traditionally in a dry milling process. And uh, here we have a wide range of different alloys based on copper and zinc. This is um, influencing the color shade. The higher the zinc content, the more greenish the effect. And the higher the copper content, of course, it uh, ends up in a very reddish warm shade. Then, of course, many, many different particle sizes to meet all the different um, end use applications, ranging from offset print with extremely fine particles to a textile coating where particles of up to 60, 70 microns are used. In the field of pearlescent pigments, we have a complete series of simic products uh, which are not um, manufactured based on a natural mica, but on a synthetic base. And this has a lot of advantages in terms of color clarity, um, offering brighter shades and uh, better transparency. So um, much higher quality compared to the natural mica pigments. In order to give even better brilliance and yeah, sparkling effects, glass pearl pigments are in our portfolio. They offer not only silver shades, but also gold and um, polychromatic shades. Yeah, and our metallic ink range are um, based on all these metallic pigments, which you can see here, the different classes. And um, I will try to give you an overview about the different pigment based classes. First of all, it's a, a range of aluminum and gold bronze powder called uh, standard chromal series. The lithoflex and rotoflex 
grades um, for bronze pigments, which are um, can be divided into different particle sizes, but not only particle size distribution, but also the the milling technology plays a big role in order to achieve thinner or thicker pigment lay, um, yeah pigment strengths. It means um, offset pigments of the Lithoflex series, for example. They require a very sheer stable pigment and um, therefore the, the ratio between diameter and pigment thickness is uh, much more different than for a very broad um, pigment from the Rotoflex series, which is suitable for gravure and flexo application. In the field of um, pigments and dispersions, we have um, a series of metalure for solvent-based inks, of course. Metalure prismatic as a so-called rainbow effect pigment, which is offering a very sparkling and uh, yeah, bright rainbow uh, effect even by gravure and mainly screen printing and flexo printing. This effect, however, is limited for this kind of solvent-based ink systems. Uh, in offset, the effect does not really lead to a very bright rainbow effect, partly because of the pigment structure and also the, the relation between uh, pigment loading and uh, film thickness, which can be achieved in offset printing. Nevertheless, there's also uh, the requirement to um, have a non leafing effect in, um, for achieving a best rainbow effect that's uh, only partly accessible with the offset printing technology. Rotovario are solvent-based uh, pastes, uh, which are developed for inks with solvent. Um, and they are provided with different kinds of solvent. We have mainly isopropanol and ethyl acetate as uh, main solvents for, for these pastes. They are in a stabilized versions available or plain just solvent exchange. And here the, the main feature is that um, we can guarantee for uh, minimum residues of mineral spirits uh, and therefore a big advantage in terms of uh, compliance to Swiss ordinance and, and other, um, other requirements from the food, in the food packaging industry. For hydroxyl and rotovar can be said, this, uh, sorry, hydroxyl and rotovar are aqua. These are water-based pastes for water-based inks. These are stabilized in order to meet high requirements regarding gassing resistance for the formulators who um, develop special long-term stable metallic inks for flexo application, water-based. Then, of course, for UV ink formulators, we offer a range of Rotovario UV grades, which are paste stamped in a acrylic monomer, for example, stabilized in order to prevent a polymerization in the finished ink. Also, Metalure is available in a, such a UV um, stabilized formulation. So there's a broad range of paste for the formulators to um, formulate their own systems, ink systems for different end users. We have also a class of palette um, pigments. Aludur, Rotosafe are solvent-based grades. That means they are dispersible in solvents only. And Hydro Palette as a water dispersible solutions. The advantages here are, yeah, they are dust free. They have don't contain any solvent. Um, that means they are not registered as dangerous goods and can be also easily handled and easily incorporated into um, the ink varnish systems. Here you can see an overview of our metallic finished ink product range. For solvent-based systems, we have Rotostar as a standard effect formulation ink. We are producing um, yeah, flake types of 
so-called cornflakes and silver dollars. Um, Isabel will go on this further. And um, here is also already a wide se um, segmentation from fine cornflakes to very shiny silver dollar based grades. And then we have Ultrastar as the brand for mirror effect inks for solvent based systems. That means um, on many uh, many substrates like smooth smooth cotton boards, smooth label papers, but of course uh, predominantly for reverse printed film substrates, um, mirror effects can be achieved. And this is a nice uh, um, effect um, as almost the metallization can be achieved um, with Ultrastar inks. In water-based systems, we have Rotostar Aqua and Unifac, Unipac WB, which are yeah, brands uh, for products uh, in main, mainly in the label and carton box uh, manufacturing. These offer yeah, more or less the same effects uh, on, on paper substrates like uh, the solvent-based Rotostar inks. For offset oil-based, we have Metal Star, Unipack, and uh, Top Star as a high-end grade based also on mirror uh, effect pigments from uh, the Metalu series. And also in energy curable uh, formulations, we have a series called Rotostar UV and also Rotostar LED for those customers who are, have installed LED curing units. The same applies for Ultrastar here. We have also recently set up uh, a new series of also LED curable mirror effect inks. The formulation here is, however, very much different to those in solvent based. Um, that means the flakes are specially treated to achieve a so called leafing effect uh, so that they have a high surface activity and um, leave up to the surface. And only by this, you can achieve a very high brilliance level by the surface printing application. Yeah, for all these kinds of um, inks, we have some guideline informa information in our technical product information available. Please uh, also ask us in case you have any additional questions for our ink portfolio. For um, especially high requirements in terms of metallic effect, especially mirror effects, we have, um, as we said already, um, Metalur as the base pigment, um, also provided as finished ink called Ultrastar, or in UV curable systems, Ultrastar UV. Beside this, the Prisma Vario and Prisma Star series for um, so called rainbow effect inks. This offers now a large variety of PVD mirror effect pigments, also as applied as a paste, dispersion, or finished ink. And it offers also a broad effect spectrum uh, from dark to light. Yeah. In this image, you can see the reflection of this pencil um, on a printed areas, which were applied with different kinds of metallure grades. On the left side, a very light one. Um, giving a quite, rather whitish reflection. In the middle, this would be a standard chrome effect. And on the right side, a dark mirror effect. And uh, the differentiation here is mainly by the uh, deposition value of uh, metallized aluminum on the substrate by in the field of production. So it's not uh, it's nothing to do with the formulation of the ink. It's um, differentiation from the base pigment, the mirror effect PVD pigment. Yeah, there are also differentiations possible in the different sol solvents which are supplied with the, uh, with the metal metallure pigment. For UV, of course, we are limited to either um, a photo initiator or um, an acrylic uh, resin, ac acrylic um, oligomer or monomer. Rainbow effect pigments are at the moment only available for solvent-based systems. We have ready-to-use inks for gravure, flexo, screen, and uh, offset printing partly. 
uh, under the brand of Topstar. And of course, UV, LED, curable inks and concentrates. Oh, then we have standard range of um, gold and silver effect pigments. Um, also, of course, in the field of finished inks, for solvent-based, water-based UV curable inks. Different silver shades are possible. Also here, uh, more lightish or darker shades from another uh, differentiation is possible by smooth to brilliant effects and even in some cases, uh, bright sparkle effects are possible. In gold uh, bronze uh, inks and flakes, different color shades are possible from a greenish to a very reddish copper shade. Uh, beside that, of course, uh, all the inks can, by the end user, also blend it to achieve polychromatic effects. This is not what we are doing here, as this uh, would extend the portfolio too wide. So uh, we are offering the base pigments and base ink formulations, which can be then further modified by adding toners or additives. Different particle sizes, um, of course, are also leading to a differentiation from coarse to very fine, but this is more or less application related. Yeah? For uh, gravure pigments, I will show this later. Yeah, the particle size are completely different than for offset for our offset ink portfolio. And as I've mentioned, the differentiation in the different chemistries um, are offering the whole portfolio, which you can see on the next page. I will not go into much detail here because um, this is just giving you an overview on our nomenclature, which uh, should make it a little bit easier to get orientation, which product classes uh, are called uh, yeah, differently, Rotostar, Platinstar, Ultrastar, for example, these are ink types. Uh, and um, then we have the different chemistries uh, differentiated by UV or aquas uh, suffixes and the differentiation by delivery form would be um, star for ink, vario for paste, and safe for the palette types. Beside that, we have, um, of course, uh, FPG mentioned as the um, product series for uh, food packaging grade. And we have also the differentiation in the end application. Here we have, uh, for example, FX, which is standing for Flexo for films, uh, or GP for gravure printing for paper and board applications. Just let us know if you uh, feel not confident with this product uh, denomination. Um, I think uh, we understand this is quite complex sometimes, um, but uh, therefore we are here to help you and guide to if you have any questions. Yeah, and so I will take over to yeah to talk about products and pigment classes. And um, aluminum pigments are available in four different qualities. And this slide shows some microscope pictures of the different qualities here: the cornflake, the silver dollar, the platinum dollar, and the vacuum metallized pigment. So this is actually how how the flakes look like and um, yeah on the other part of the picture a pen is lying on a reverse printed film so um, and this is representing so the reflection is representing the effect the pigment quality um, yeah achieve when printed reverse on a film and um, yeah it's getting from here to there <laughs> to the VMP pigment, um, yeah, quite more clear um, and more mirror-like. And yeah, it's one of the selections, one of our um, huge color and effect spectrum we have in our in our portfolio. Cornflake is the base for our standard silver effects. Um, I mean, we are looking for brighter effects with higher gloss. Um, we can use silver dollar effects 
in our formulation and platinum dollar is an extra thin milled pigment and with very high gloss and it close in certain applications to our um, highest um, pigment category, the not milled um, VMP pigment, the brand is Metalur, Thorsten mentioned already and yeah, these are showing the real foil-like effects. Mm, metallic effects are also dependent on particle size. Um, by comparison of a fine, a medium size and a, and a coarse pigment here, um, I think it's more clear um, which one to choose. So a fine pigment gives a very strong hiding power and a high gloss effect and due to the smooth surface when printed, for example, yeah, offset application. The coarse pigment is a, gives a very bright and a very high brilliant effect. And, um, Okay, medium size combines um, the best parts um, from from the fine and from the from the bright ones, but um, the level is quite um, yeah fair, fair in in hiding power, fair in brilliant effect. So it's a medium effect. Let's put it like this. Mm. We produce the aluminium pigments in leafing or non-leafing quality. Yeah, and this is part of our milling process. So the left side explains how a non-leafing pigment behaves. On the substrate is an ink film applied, and um, yeah, within this ink film, the pigments are very homogeneous distributed. And yet due to the polar surface. And in comparison, this is a picture of the leaving pigment. The, Metallic ink is containing a leaving pigment and this gives a very bright effect. It, um, this is because the pigment, yeah, we call it, we, they tend to swim. I mean, they don't actually swim, but they, they orientate on the top of the ink film. This is due to their unpolar surface. Yeah, and yeah, when you see uh, the picture on the right side, it's, um, it's a spray coated application, but it really gives an, an a good um, comparison of uh, what is what is the yeah the optical effect. What is the op optical effect difference from leafing versus non-leafing? Ah, yeah. Um, in um, this is a, the comparison of an offset ink, and um, here we can yeah show the difference of leafing and non-leafing quality. The Metal Star 067000 um, is a non-leafing ink, and the Metal Star 072007 is an ink based on a leafing on leafing pigments. So I now I, I think did I use the pointer? No, it's easier with with the pointer because it's um yeah much pictures and <laughs> not so easy to to explain. So. Um, what we sh wanted to show here is um, what is the difference when a, a silver ink um, is printed purely and printed with an overprint varnish. This is the, the non-leafing ink and this is the leaving ink. And um, the non-leafing ink stays quite similar regarding the brilliance, while the leaving ink shows an intense metallic character which is affected by using a varnish. The comparison here on the right side, it shows the tinting behavior of both inks. So both inks um, in the picture here, um, they contain the same amount of color. So they were both directly tinted with a blue and the non-leafing ink shows a very intense metallic color strength and the leaving ink is brilliant and yeah, quite silverish. So yeah, this is okay for for offset. Is um, is um, both inks are very really, yeah well well known in the market and and broadly used. So yeah, both both pigment qualities have their standpoints in the market. Metallic inks, they need a good orientation. And the metallic effect is a result of 
of the reflecting light. This picture shows an ink, um, um, coloring, a toner ink, where the the little parts of the the toner are homogeneously um, distributed in the in an ink film, and the reflection angle of the light is yeah just ideal. Directly comparison, um, these two um, two pictures show an ink film with here on top with a good orientation and here with a bad orientation of pigment. So they lay just across um, within this ink film. And it's yeah it's easy to see that that the reflection angle is is quite um, different. So in an ideal world <laughs> the metallic inks orientate smooth among the substrate and then the reflection angle of the light is perfect. And um, here, the the, ref the reflection angle is, is is diffuse when when using the uh, w when the orientation is is not so good. <clears throat> not the typical influences. So, a good orientation of a metallic pigment is key, also for good coverage. So, how to choose the right pigments for the print application? So, I hand over to Torsten yeah. again. Yeah, with the next slides, we try to give you an overview on the main print application and their specific requirements regarding metallic pigments. As we mentioned already, we have this um, mainly delivered into um, customers using gravure printing with uh, rotation and sheet fat, flexo, which is rotative, screen printing, uh, which is uh, also both rotative and flat bed and uh, of course offset um, where we deliver mainly to sheet fed offset printing processes yeah gravure um, gravure printing is a uh, rather widely used in uh, the packaging inks particularly flexible packaging but also for uh, folding boxes and uh, yeah many uh, applications also going now into shrink sleeves and their uh, gravure printing is also playing a big role right now. The gravure process is uh, used um, is using an engraved cylinder with cells as by the print motif. So uh, during the rotation this ink the ink is picked up from the tray and carried towards the uh, Dr. Blade, the Dr. Blade on the left side here, um, the excessive amount of ink is wiped off. And then um, a defined amount of ink within this engraved cells can be transferred directly onto the substrate. So it's a quite simple process. There's no hardly any shear forces. The, um, yeah, the transfer line is very simple. The inks have very low viscosities. And um, therefore, yeah, there's not much complicated, so much complication when using metallic pigments, even at speeds of more than yeah, 100, 200, or even up to 300 meters per minute. Generally, the um, inks have low viscosity. That is very in favor of metallic pigments because the shear forces are uh, definitely not a problem. The applied film weight is typically in the range of three to six gram per square meters. And depending on the cell size and the line counts of the cylinder. The flake structure of metallic flakes should be considered as the particle size and also the cell width of the cylinder should allow the continuous and smooth transfer onto and out of the cells for the engraved cylinder. It means this should ensure that uh, always um, particles are not blocking the cells, should get in and get out as smooth as possible. And therefore, a general recommendation is uh, particle size in average should not exceed one third of the, um, of the screen ruling of the cells. Uh, as by experience, bronze pigments with average particle size of four to 10 micron can be used for and are suitable for gravure printing and can lead to a good coverage and brilliant effects. Motifs, however, with fine lettering and yeah, fine lines 
fine motifs, of course, will need finer particles. So here we are in the in the um, range of four, five, six microns, ideally for fine line printing. Um, however, if um, large areas are to be printed and higher brilliance requirements are um, standardized, then uh, coarser particles from yeah, 10 to 12 micron can be used for gravure printing. This, however, requires a different uh, specification of the cylinder, so with wider screen rulings, and uh, then also bronze pigments of coarser particles can be used without problems. For aluminium, yeah, the sizes of particle size uh, is a bit more flexible. Um, from particle sizes from average five to up to 18 micron can be used. Such rather coarse pigments, typically silver dollar types, provide much brighter effects and even sometimes a sparkling effect can be created uh, with, by using rather coarse silver dollar flakes, particularly in, in wallpaper applications where the screen ruling, rulings are very wide. But um, also in flexible packaging, yeah, um, there should be a certain compromise between particle size and um, yeah, brightness to achieve a better transfer and a better um, coverage if this is a, a main target. A blend of fine and coarse pigments, of course, can also be chosen to lead the uh, best compromise between brilliance and coverage. Usually, as I mentioned, flexible packaging, if you have a reverse printing application with a transparent film sub substrate, this will automatically lead to a perfect orientation of the flakes. And therefore, um, even with uh, yeah, rather simple products from the cornflake range of Rotovario can achieve very good brilliance levels. If, um, for example, a silver dollar is used, however, this is uh, coming pretty close to a uh, metallization already. And if the highest uh, requirements can must be achieved, then of course, mirror effects, pigments from Metallure or Ultra Star finished inks can be used. Yeah, the supply viscosity is also Im important. Um, the Delivery specifications for our inks allow a certain adding of solvents and also allowing modifications by, for example, adding toners to achieve polychromatic inks. So with the finished inks, you have certainly a, a very uh, flexibility to modify it for your end use systems. Gravure characteristics are, yeah, it's a very simple technology for high quality and accurate products. The cylinder making, however, is expensive. Therefore, gravure printing is usually only profitable for high print runs. And um, yeah, it's an accurate technology with trend now to finer screen rulings in order to reduce the amount of ink to be applied. And that means also for the metallic pigments that uh, finer particles has to be used in order to achieve the same opacity with a reduced deposition of ink. Now, the next uh, slide will show you how flexo printing works. It, uh, it's a bit more complex than gravure printing. It's also a low viscosity ink systems are used. Nevertheless, higher in viscosity compared to gravure and uh, but lower in compared to the next uh, screen printing. The process is more complex, um, as I mentioned. The lamellar flakes of metallic inks have, all, uh, have to transfer not only one pass via the analogs, uh, via the cells of a gravure cylinder, but also from an analogs roller towards the plate cylinder and from there on, onto the substrate. That means viscosities have to be a little bit higher in order to um, yeah, keep control on the process. And um, also already the, the ink supply from the chamber doctor blade 
um, must um, make sure that the yeah, ink is not floating off, it, it, it's transferred properly onto the Anilox roller, where a definite amount of ink can be transferred onto the plate cylinder. Yeah, and um, very important for the quality of the um, of the prints is that the pressure between plate cylinder and impression cylinder is very much controlled so that the ink is not squeezed on the substrate and this would lead to uh, pretty unsharp print images. So here a, a proper adjustment has to be reached um, to achieve the best possible ink effect. Meanwhile, the Flexo is has uh, quality levels which are very high and uh, yeah, this thanks to the development of uh, new printing plate materials in the past 20 years, offering uh, excellent um, quality levels. In general, the film thickness um, for flexo printing is a bit lower than for gravure. We say about complete, approximately two to four micron is the, the wet film application. It um, is, however, a higher filled ink formulation than gravure because in gravure printing you have a very high uh, solvent evaporation rate compared to flexo in solvent based uh, systems at least. And therefore, um, you need to build up uh, higher filling by resins and also pigments in order to achieve the same opacity with a thinner layer of ink. Ink sam systems are available, yeah, the UV curable, water and solvent based systems. Suitable particle size distribution. Here we have to say bronze pigments uh, should be smaller in particle size than for gravure application. Generally between four and eight micron are suitable for this uh, flexo process. And in aluminum, yeah, usually six to 14 micron pigments can be transferred properly without any problem. Yeah, the um, further characteristics beside the good quality, meanwhile, we have uh, acceptable prices for the, the flexo plates as an advantage for this technology. And this um, allows this process being used for small and medium print runs. While for gravure printing, you need uh, to consider the high cost for the cylinder making. And um, yeah, this allows only the use for long uh, print or for high print runs. Um, and then normally the cylinders are kept for the next uh, print order. This is in many cases for Flexo uh, different. Yeah, squeezed edges sometimes uh, are visible if the pressure between printing plate cylinder and impression cylinder is too high. But uh, in the last um, years and decades, uh, the quality level went up very much and uh, this should not be a problem anymore. Yeah, typical applications for flexor printing are self-adhesive labels, carton board printing, flexible packaging as well. And uh, in our case also for metallics, tissue printing um, is a, a very high demand as well as corrugated board. Here the uh, image of uh, the process for rot rotary screen printing. In the rotary screen printing process, ink is pressed through a cylindric screen with the aid of a squeegee, which you can see in the middle, and thus transferred to the substrate, which is guided over a counter pressure cylinder that moves with it. The screen has open and closed areas um, being blocked by a photopolymer, for example, that reproduces the printed image. Important factors here for screen printing with effect pigments is that the selection of the screen mesh size must be appropriate um, with regard to the particle size of the metallic or pearlescent pigments which are used in the screen ink. So it, uh, the question is not only which kind of uh, pigments can be used, the first question would be which um, 
dot definition is required and which screen mesh size can be used in order to select the right pigment grades. Rotary screen printing is often used in inline finishing processes with highly brilliant silver and gold inks in combination also with offset and flexo printing units. A very common application is high quality self adhesive labels for the personal care sector. Here we also um, see a high demand for inks based on metallure. So high quality levels uh, um, where the metallization or the um, foil application is not very efficient and uh, inks um, have a very high um, yeah, advantage in terms of uh, product efficiency and, and print speed. However, textile printing and wallpaper uh, paper printing are also used in the process where very sparkling pigments even can be applied, even glitter effects are possible by using effect pigments, for example, from our Luxan range, the, uh, the glass flake pigments with particle size of uh, up to 100 micron and uh, with quite large la mesh sizes. Yeah, in the next picture, you can see uh, the graph for flatbed screen printing. A fine, uh, uh, sorry, a flat screen frame is used here instead of a cylindrical uh, screen. The ink lies on the screen as it's pushed over the printing surface by the squeegee with the appropriate pressure. The substrate has to be moved under the screen frame and must be fixed during the printing process. Very large formats are possible and uh, it's possible to also print on rigid substrates. Uh, for example, glass surfaces for smartphones, for TV sets or microwave devices. The printing of the prefabricated textiles is also possible and taken very often, for example, for t-shirt printing with flatbed screen printing. Producing the screen frames is quite fast and rather inefficient, uh, inexpensive. So um, photopolymeric layer serves as a print cliche and this can be easily produced and therefore the whole process is also very efficient for very small print runs. For example, a copy of just 10, uh, 10 pieces for a t-shirt is also efficiently uh, possible. Even though digital printing has now already penetrated very far into the application areas of screen printing, um, it is still an indispensable printing technology, especially in the area of effect pigments. Especially here, digital printing does not uh, have the possibility to yeah, transfer very coarse and sparkling pigments. That's why screen printing is still um, a very much um, preferred process for these applications. The application can vary greatly in terms of their film thicknesses. So um, rather thin layers achieved by um, mirror-based mirror or mirror effect pigment-based inks, um, which are, have a thickness of maybe only one to two micron in dry film, then others might have a film thickness of about eight to 30 micron. That means uh, comparably eight to 30 gram per square meter um, film weight application. It's a high or medium high or high viscosity ink system, especially in flatbed uh, viscosity is even higher than for the rotary screen application. But all kinds of ink systems can be used, UV curing, solvent and water-based, also the solvent free plastisol types are still very common in the industry for flexible substrates like yeah, uh, sports, uh, sports equipment and so on. Yeah, suitable particle size distribution is just depending on the used mesh size of the screen. Other characteristics are that yeah, three-dimensional objects are achievable. A very high brilliance can be uh, achieved by using very coarse pigments. 
at the same time, due to the high evaporation of solvents in uh, inks for solvent-based screen printing, a mirror effect is achievable. So it is a very versatile um, application method. The cost for making this kind of screen frames is very inexpensive. So um, it is very flexible also with regard to manufacturing for small um, print runs. And uh, to be considered is that it's a rather slow printing technology. So it's uh, somehow the speed limiting uh, process technology in uh, hybrid machines when uh, rotor um, rotary screen printing is uh, included in a um, multi technology printing machine with offset and screen, uh, offset uh, flexo and screen, for example. Main applications are self-adhesive labels, three-dimensional objects, textile printing, and so on. Yeah, here, the some introduction to offset printing. It is a very complex printing process compared to the other processes discussed. The ink is distributed evenly in very thin layers over a large area on these rollers. And uh, this not only consists of one or two rollers, but it's a cascade of different printing rollers. This has the function that yeah, this rather high viscosity inks need to be distributed on the whole width of the rollers to ensure that uh, also on the outer area of the printed field there's uh, sufficient ink available to be transferred on the, on the print object. In this process, metallic pigments in particular are subjected to very high shear energies. Um, the viscosity is high and a lot of rollers are um, rotating. So the ink um, is passing quite high shear um, during on the way to the printing plate cylinder, to the blanket cylinder, and then finally onto the substrate. Yeah, this is sometimes a challenge for the la lamellar pigments. So very fine particles, uh, very fine um, pigments have uh, higher film, uh, higher thickness uh, compared to gravure printing. So it's uh, a special printing uh, process that requires flakes that are more tough in terms of their mechanical stability. Um, I would like to go back once again. Offset inks are highly viscous and hydrophobic. Yeah, this is uh, the um, main uh, yeah, characteristic that uh, is different to all other inks being discussed before. They are accepted on the printing plate, which is actually has a coating which accepts hydrophobic um, compounds and which is fixed to the impression cylinder. On the areas to be printed with lipophilic surfaces, um, there is a fountain solution also applied at the same time. And uh, this ensures that there is a kind of separation from the printed image and the non-printed images. So if we want the ink is only passing on those areas uh, which are hydrophobic and the Fountain solution is helping to separate uh, this differentiation. Then the ink is passing on to a blanket cylinder where a kind of rubber blanket is applied on. And then the inks are uh, ink is transferred to the substrate. So with each transfer, fresh ink and aqueous fountain solution is somehow added onto the plate cylinder. and. Uh, uh, this will be also um, applied on the final material of uh, on the final substrate, which is in most cases paper. With every rotation, the thin layer of offset ink splits um, and uh, splits up into yeah one layer remaining on one roller and another transferring to another one. 
Um, and this means a large uh, shear rate for the ink and strong mechanical load for the pigment. If you would use a very coarse pigment grade, maybe let's say with 15, 20 micron, um, there would be a high chance that these pigments are deformed or even broken under these shear forces, especially at high speed. And then um, a good transfer cannot be guaranteed anymore. Therefore, uh, for the best performance and the best press stability, the finest metallic pig pigments have to be used. Yeah, here we see that uh, film thicknesses of one to one and a half microns are uh, being used for offset printing inks. That means uh, flake pigments like bronze must be uh, in the range of two to four and a half micron, while aluminum can be a little bit coarser um, and still transferring very well. Offset characteristics is, uh, yeah, that's, it's a very complex roller system for optimized ink transfer. It, offers uh, printing on non-printed and printing areas in plane on the uh, print cylinder or on the printing sheet. And um, therefore, the differentiation works with uh, surface by surface tension. As I said, hydrophilic and hydrophobic areas on the printing plate. But nevertheless, it's a very high accuracy printing process, which are, is uh, unachieved by any of the other mentioned print technologies. Yeah, Isabel, you are continuing with <laughs> handling of aluminum flakes. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, how to handle aluminum pigments. So, yeah, let's talk about shear force. With an ideal shear force, the aluminum pigments are distributed well and homogeneously. We create a predispersion for powder and pastes with liquid parts of the formulation ingredients. So we yeah, are probably parts of the binder. For pellets, we recommend a certain soaking time in a solvent yeah, before processing further. This dissolves the carry on the pellet formulation yeah, more ideally. Important fact is that the shear is not only generated by the stirrer, it comes also from the moving liquid. So this part with the predispersion, this is something we we really focus and we, we really recommend for handling further. It's um yeah more clear. When on the on the right side here um you can see pigments that have been shared too much. The you know, the edges of these pigments are broken and um yeah the scattering light here you can imagine how this getting into yeah not an ideal light reflection so it's um diffuse then um yeah on here on this pictures here this is a is a cut through a press proof so a printed image and um it's cut through so the so the through the ink layer and here the the pigments yeah, are are good dispersed, laying more or less um, good orientated um, here in the in the in the ink film, while um, yeah still on this picture here agglomerates are still visible and the yeah pigments still stick together too much. So it's um, an example for a poor dispersion. Um, the consequence of excessive shear force is, yeah, is obvious. Broken edges, they reduce the pigment size. The content of fine particle increases and the brilliant effect suffers. The color becomes more grayish of the, of the printed ink and the broken edges scatter the light and lead to diffuse reflection. Too little shear force is also not good because the mixture contains agglomerates and they lead to a poor opacity. Then next additional step would be poor opacity. So one would think um, to load more ink into the formulation. Yeah, this makes the formulation more expensive. <laughs> and um, yeah, with high pigment content, the color transfer suffers as Torsten just mentioned that um, how, how to 
how to yeah in an offset how to imagine an offset formulation with too high ink uh, pigment in an ink yeah this makes some um, problems during press run if the pr um, pigment loading is too high this will most likely result in an uneven color appearance on the substrate so too much pigment in the formulation yeah, also leads to a poor split proof so um, intercoat adhesion is will be affected. Mm, yeah, how to how to um, how to avoid this? Mm, can show you the next slide. Um, how we dissolve in our lab? Um, what kind of dissolvers do we use? So for uh, metalur, the VMP paste, we use some um, disc dissolver and yeah, this kind of stereo variants for the milled pigment pastes and in our production. Also here for the vacuum metallized pigment, we use the, the disc and um, in production for the milled pigment paste, we use the butterfly stirrer to get a sufficient um, yeah, dispersing. How do we know if a dispersion is homogeneously steered? Uh, we use glass plate. The ink is poured over the plate, and so it's easy visible when there are agglomerates still in it. But I think the the next two slides show it. Um, yeah, it's a more practice. So this is a picture on our QC test. So the ink is poured on the on the glass plate, and here the little lumps are very easy to be seen while on the picture here the ink is poured on the glass plate and and no no lumps all that proves that this ink is homogeneously steered and um, very perfectly and smooth <laughs> and um, good dispersed yeah this overview shows you our production step how we process a metallic uv paste for example into an ink um, we fill the vessel parts with the UV varnish ingredients. So um, after that, we add the pigment paste. Then it's all um, yeah, predispersed until it's homogeneously, um, yeah, homogeneously dispersed. We, we do this glass plate check. If it still contains agglomerates, we go on back, stir and stir more. And if it's good, if the check is okay, we add the rest of the UV varnish and then, um, yeah, we remain um, to disperse to the to the real ink formulation. And I think this is, yeah, this is how we, um, we can make sure that no agglomerates and no lumps are in our ink. Yeah, and we come now to our last slide, Thorsten. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, summary. Yeah, just uh, just a moment. My screen was a little bit off. Yeah, um, yeah. As um, we have um, this seen, uh, there are lots of uh, factors to be observed in the in the making, in the handling of uh, metallic pigments uh, to make them. Uh, ideal in the final application. Here, just an overview on the metallic color room um, where we have to differentiate between uh, the different characteristics of metallic, but also the different, um, different influences com coming from substrate, from the printing technology. The chemistry has a strong influence with the different post treatments of uh, the pigments, for example, UV curable inks need a stabilization, um, need a kind of surface um, adjustment so that pigments leaving up. Water-based systems need uh, um, yeah, also stabilization against gassing um, in order to meet the shelf life requirements and also to be well wetted in the ink system. Then, uh, yeah, hiding power is uh, a strong influencing partner, um, influencing factor in um, the 
requirements of ink. So, but also um, this is not only valid for metallic pigments, which uh, of course tend to give a strong hiding power, but um, the pearlescent pigments, for example, uh, are intended to be uh, transparent or translucent. So um, here effect pigments uh, have to be divided into different categories in order to meet the specific color rooms. Yeah, sparkly effects, uh, of course, are suitable for um, some applications only where coarse part particles can be applied. Um, others are silk-like smooth pigments, which can be almost applied everywhere in all kinds of application, but then requires uh, very fine to extremely fine particle sizes. And the lightness we have seen, yeah, there is differentiation between darker shades and lighter shades, lighter with kind of whitish appearance where the reflection is in, yeah, in a multi-angle uh, view. That means um, the reflection is multi-directional, while for a darker impression, a rather yeah, single angle reflects the 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 in, incoming light the color shade itself yeah but for silver uh, it is quite simple this is uh, based on aluminum pigments other bronze uh, grades are um, yeah formulated with different kind of bronze pigments with different alloys copper and zinc um, variations then there are possibilities to apply um, toner pigments and having tintable effects. This is more valid for non-leafing inks, non-leafing based uh, pigments who are easy to be tinting while the leafing uh, grades um, often causing kind of indifferent uh, results. And yeah, the printing technology of course, yeah, with their capabilities and limitations to print uh, metallic pigments or effect pigments with regard yeah, particle size, particle thickness, chemistry and so on. Yeah, as a summary, um, metallic effect pigments open a large color and effect room. Eckhart offers a large variety of pigments for all classes of uh, printing applications. The choice, however, of the pigments depends on uh, the required effect, but also the settings by the printing te technology. Yeah, the understanding of pigment choice and how to create an optimal dispersion is the key for a good result in printing metallics. <laughs>